Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about figuring out why an outboard stalls at idle and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Now this is a little something. I'll take the uh, cover off in a second. We'll figure out what it is. And it stalls when it goes into idle. Obviously there are lots and lots of reasons this can happen, but we're going to start today by looking at some of the simple obvious things you can do yourself before sort of talking a bit about what else could be wrong. This boat hasn't been started today, um, it's still morning, just, um, and I want to show you what it's like to start this outboard because I think there's a few clues there. Alright, we'll take the cover off quickly so we can see what it is, and then I'm going to start it in the way I would normally start an outboard in the morning, which is using the choke. So Tatsu 9.8, very common outboard. Um, Tatsu make all the Mercury outboards below 30 horsepower as well. So all the small Mercuries and all the Tatsus will be the same. Obviously hard to start outboards deserve a video in their own right. But as I said, there's a little bit of a clue here, I think anyway. So what have we got? No throttle, full throttle. If I give it some choke, prime the bulb with the arrow pointing upwards, good pressure. The vent on the tank here is also open, so we're not going to get a vacuum inside the tank. Lanyards in the kill switch, we're good to go. Now if I keep pulling that outboard, it'll stay pretty much like that. You saw it fired once, now it won't. And that's because it's actually running quite rich. If I put the choke in, open the throttle a bit, what we're doing there is we're changing the ratio from too much fuel to having more air, less fuel. All right, running now, turn it off. So you could see it's a little bit smoky, so perhaps too much oil in the fuel. I'm going to take the boat over to Renko now so we can have a look more closely at what's going on with this outboard. And I'm also going to jump on the computer and see if I can find a manual, an owner's manual, definitely will be easy. Maybe I'll find a PDF service manual as well. And we'll see what ratio of oil to fuel this is supposed to take. And we'll start looking at things like what's the recommended idle speed, all that kind of stuff. It's also worth noting these chokes aren't all or nothing. I have a bad habit of just pulling a choke completely out once it's running, pushing it in. But often you will actually find you get best results from one of the intermediate settings. First thing I do is duck over to the mainland and get some fresh unleaded fuel. You can see here the two stroke with sold is 50 to 1. So I'm just going to get some unleaded. We'll figure out exactly which ratio we need rather than buying the premix 50 to 1. If it turns out it's 51, happy days. You just fill up from that Bowser and no problem. There's an example of stalling. As you go into neutral, then try and go into reverse. That's exactly the problem we're looking to solve. All right, let's tie this up with the outboard here. How's that for a chain link? Gonna use that for a weight for floats. Okay, here we are. I'm gonna get some extra details off the outboard now. Then we're gonna find an owner's manual at the minimum and hopefully a service manual. All right, grab some thinking juice and jump on the computer. While I look this up, there's probably a couple of things worth talking about. One is we were saying, I think this outboard's running rich at idle, at least. And uh, this comes down to what they call the stoichiometric ratio. Every chemical reaction has a certain amount of reactants that need to be in balance. In this case, uh, it's 14.7 is the magic number, not that it means much, just means 14.7 kilograms of air will completely burn one kilogram of fuel. So once that ratio is out, it, you know, you're either lean or rich. The reason you need a choke in the morning is that you're actually burning the fuel vapor. And when fuel's cold, it stays a liquid, you know, it doesn't vaporize as readily. So you need more to get the right amount of fuel vapor to burn. 
So obviously we're getting more than that given it's not running because it's too rich. So I am simply going to say, now, what did I look? I found the, I took a photo of the sticker on it. 8B Tohatsu 9.8 horsepower outboard, uh, manual PDF, see what we come up with. So owner manual is the first hit, which is great. Uh, it's not the service manual, so it's not going to be super detailed, but hopefully it'll answer some of the questions we've got um, with regards to why this thing's stalling. So let's have a look. Uh, mounting's interesting on there because uh, we're spraying all this water, so it'd be nice to see whether it's, uh, you know, mounted too high or low or whether it's a trim problem. Uh, let's have a look. What do we got? Specifications, actually. Page 10 is really probably going to answer a lot of our questions. Here we go, we're the 9.8, so we're down here, in forward gear, idle speed should be 750 RPM, just writing some of this down, and in neutral should be 950 RPM, so that's good to know. So here we can see it's saying 50 to 1, so we could have just used the premix from the Marina. So 50 to 1 fuel and uh, BP7 HS10, 7 is the temperature of the plug, 10 is the gap and that which is one millimeter and the R is just saying you can run with a resistor or without so we'll check the plugs we'll check the gap we'll see whether they're black whether it's been too rich too oily uh, and we'll tip that fuel out and we'll make up some fresh 50 to 1 to make sure we got the right fuel mix this tank was held in with several bits of wire rope and some rusty old padlocks which makes getting it out very hard but I have a cunning plan. Got it. All right, let's start by tipping the last of this fuel out. Probably worth doing this to clean the tank out anyway. Get a gunk in there. Here's my little uh, Yamalube cheat bottle. So this tank holds 12 litres up to the fill line here. And 50 to 1, 12 litres, 240 mils. So fill the oil to this line here, tip it in, then we'll add the fuel. We now have clean fuel with the correct oil ratio. I'm not expecting that to be the problem, but it's nice to start with the basics. Rusty old padlock's gone. Fuel tank reattached. Now, there's a padlock between the winders here, which is a great idea. Stops them unwinding accidentally and stops it getting stolen. This padlock is much higher quality than the ones that were holding the fuel tank in, so no reason we can't also use the same padlock for the fuel tank. Make it simpler, one key, more robust so let's do that as well all right let's get this cowling off and check the plugs another simple thing we know we've got fuel right now let's make sure that they're the right plugs and just have a look okay looks like this outboard is a single coil which means that both these plugs will fire at the same time it's a waste spark system one will fire when the pistons at bottom dead center one will fire when it's top dead center I'm just putting them on different sides so I can be sure this side goes to the bottom, that side goes to the top. All right, let's pull them out. They look quite new, but let's see what color the electrodes are. And you'll see here, the sticker confirms what the owner manual said that we downloaded. Sorry about the mowing noise in the background. All right, bottom cylinder, top cylinder. We'll keep them separate so we know if they're really different, which one's our problem cylinder. This is the plug from the top cylinder. This is the plug from the bottom cylinder. They look okay. Colors very normal. So it's obviously not running rich underway. These little tools are pretty cool for checking gap. See it's got millimeters on here. 
one millimeter is here and the other side's tapered. So if we put the wedge in and rotate it, it actually starts to get tight. Oh no, it's snug at one millimeter. So this is the one millimeter mark in the electrode like this. A little bit easier to read the outside, so 40 thou. Imperial on the outside, metric on the inside. Yeah, pretty good. This one's maybe closed up a tiny bit. But there we go. If we just rotate it to one mil, it opens it up. They're kind of good for checking and setting gaps, to be honest with you. All right, let's throw these back in. Next thing I do is open the drain on the carburetor and just see if there's any water in the bottom. It'll be a little bit hard to tell, but it's a good way to get it out. Fuel filter also looks pretty clean, which is great. Just drain the bottom a little bit. That'll evaporate from the lower cowling before we try and start it, so that's all right. Now I've got to say, uh, huge number i can't give you a percentage i'll be guessing but a uh, huge number of output problems are dirty carburetors they just are you get water in the fuels the common contaminant also because they don't get used that often uh, the fuel evaporates and you end up with varnish in the carburetor so between being near water and being used intermittently you know it's a common common problem it's worth mentioning that you have an idle circuit on a carburetor. This is a small orifice that puts just enough fuel to keep the carburetor idling. You can then adjust it. There's a idle mixture screw. So that's looking to be a prime target for this. That doesn't affect the mixture throughout the rest of the rev range, just at idle. Another thing I really advise asking yourself with outboard problems or any mechanical problem, maybe any problem in life, is what's changed? You know, was it working okay, now it's not? If that's the case and you haven't touched anything, it's very unlikely that the mixture screw has moved on its own. Uh, it's much more likely that a bit of debris has blocked it, making it go lean. In this case, I think we're rich, so I don't think that's the problem. I'm not gonna jump into um, cleaning the carburetor, but just be aware that if it was working and nothing's changed, if you start going changing things, you're most likely to be making it worse. Even if it starts to run better, have you compensated for a problem by adjusting it? Is the passage blocked? So not much fuel is getting through, you've richened it up, it runs great, but you haven't actually solved the problem, you've just compensated for it. So, something to think about. Excuse my rusty boat screwdriver, but here is the idle mixture screw, and here is the idle speed screw. Adjusting this screw is a way of making no throttle a little bit higher than it was before. Maybe our problem, who knows. Uh, here, adjusts the fuel mixture. The closer we get to this stoichiometric ratio, this perfect ratio of fuel and air, the faster the idle will be. So we really want to adjust this for the highest idle we can get. Then we adjust this to make sure that we're in the correct range as per the manual, the owner's manual we found, when we're in neutral idling. Boats that aren't idling make it tricky to adjust the mixture screw. Obviously, it's not running long enough for you to dial it in. So what I'm gonna do is have a look at what the manual says it should be. We'll check where it's at, and we'll just start fiddling with it, restart it, see if it keeps running or not. I'm gonna look in the owner's manual again, but I think we're starting to cross over into service manual territory to find out what the screw should be set to, but I'll have a look. All right, adjustment's definitely not a uh, carburetor adjustment. It's just uh, trim anode, steering friction, etc. So let's see if we can find a service manual. We don't really need one, but be nice to know. Because the choke plays such a large role in making the outboard run richer when we want it to, I'm gonna make sure it's adjusted properly and that when the choke's pushed in, it is actually opening all the way. To do this, I'm just going to take the airbox silencer off. Actually, it looks like this bolt holds the whole carburetor on, unfortunately. The service manual I found for this is one of those, you know, covers a huge range of outboards. It implies the uh, choke is adjustable on models from 5 to 80 horsepower, whatever. 
uh, but we'll see. So I think the answer with this choke is no, not adjustable, and yes, opens completely. So that's all right, we can rule that out. Obviously any gap here is a huge vacuum leak, so we need to bolt this back together to test it. And given the length of the bolts, I'm going to have to put it back entirely, but that's okay. This is a plastic housing and there isn't a shoulder on the bolt to stop it being over tightened, so be careful with this kind of thing. What I'm going to do now is wind this mixture screw in, counting how many half turns until it bottoms out. One, two, three, hmm, three half turns, so not a lot. Now what I'm going to do is wind it all the way out and just double check it. Do the last bit by hand so we don't drop it in the water. All right, here we go. It's pointy, which means drawing it out adds more fuel. If it's more rounded, I believe it means it adds more air. This is more common though. So to get it back where it was, wind it till it bottoms out. And then we're just gonna go one, two. Was three half turns before, I'm gonna do two now. And I'm gonna see if it runs. Obviously, we've still got old fuel in the fuel line, the fuel filter, the carburetor, etc. But that should run through pretty quick. So, still stalling at idle. I'm going to wind this screw just to up the idle a little bit, see if we can actually get it idling, and then I'll check the idle speed. Let's go half turn. Definitely better. Try another half turn. Anyway, what I want to do is get it to the point where it's idling so we can see what effect the mixture screw has, even if the idle is too high. A lot higher there, so we know we're getting into a better mixture. It's not getting higher on the next turn, so I'm going to go back to where it was. Now backing the idle speed back to where it was. It's idling now, but I want to see what speed it's idling at. I think my fancy new multimeter can tell me by putting a clamp onto the HD lead. Other ways are to uh, have an optical taco uh, where you put a little bit of tape onto the flywheel and it'll measure it, a few ways to go. Obviously, uh, a taco that measures the pulses, like electrical taco, works as well, but we don't have one, there's not one installed on the boat. Here's the little multimeter oscilloscopes. It's got different modes, standard multimeter plugs. And on the top here, you've got a two channel oscilloscope. This is the lead I'm gonna use, plug it in. It has one clamp that goes around the HT lead and an alligator clip that goes to a ground. So plug this in. It's worth mentioning, I haven't owned this very long and I don't know much about its use. The documentation's a bit sketchy, uh, but we'll just experiment. Okay, clamped onto the HT lead and I've put the ground on the same bolt that the lead from the coil goes to. Alright, when you fire this up it's got a couple of modes. 
don't know if you're going to see this screen very well but you can see the top one is vehicle diagnosis top one here is ignition after that okay a bit of a flat line at the moment let's fire it up Looking at the waveform we get from the oscilloscope, it looks like it's firing about every 82 milliseconds, something like that. So let's do a quick little bit of maths. Here we go, so 1,000 milliseconds in a second, then 82 divided by gives us 12 and 60 for a minute. So 60 times, and that puts us at 731 RPM. Now, being a two-stroke, it fires every cycle. The real question is, is it a waste spark system or is that coil actually two separate coils in one? Because really it should fire twice every cycle, which means our idle is 300 and clearly it's not. So I think we can be reasonably confident that it is about 731. That was in neutral, so it's actually pretty low, I think. So maybe just a low idle is our problem here. Uh, obviously the cause of a low idle is, is, you know, a big question. Is it block jets? Is it just set wrong? I'm not super confident in this figure. I've never done uh, an idle speed this way, but it seems plausible. My timing light doesn't have a taco feature either. Uh, there is actually a little phone app you can use that flashes the LED on your phone on and off at a certain frequency. And when it goes still, you know, when it looks like the flywheel's not moving at all, that's the same speed as the light's flashing on and off. So you kind of achieve it by trial and error. Pretty similar to the way a timing light works, really. Uh, and it'll tell you, but doesn't really work in daylight. So we could check tonight. But at the end of the day, I think the proof's in the pudding. If it's not idling so high that it really clunks going into gear and it's not stalling, you're in the ballpark. So I think we go for a run and test it under the same conditions, i.e. when you're traveling at speed and drop to neutral, does it stall? That's very different to just having it run. Uh, and um, how does it feel going in and out of gear? I'm going to leave the cowling off so I can adjust the carburetor as we go. But bear in mind, the cowling can cause a problem. Well, it's not the cowling, but if you had an exhaust leak or something like that, and you're actually suffocating the motor because of the cowling, you know, so you may find you get it dialed in beautifully, put the cowling back on, start stalling again. In which case I'd look for some sort of exhaust leak or something like that. But I don't think we have that, so let's take it for a run. Obviously it's warm now, so it should start nice and easily, but we'll test again when it's cold as well. Start by testing whether it stalls going from full throttle to idle staying in gear. Definitely better. Alright, let's try neutral. Rev should come up if anything. Staying the same. Dropping. Hmm. I'm going to up the idle speed the tiniest bit. Didn't clunk going into gear at all, so I think we can afford to go up a smidge. Let's just go quarter turn. I think we can actually come up a bit more, to be honest with you. It's not clunking into gear and the revs do drop pretty low when we put it into gear. Not sure I want to get into the shade, it's a bit cool for that. Alright, what are you going to do to us? Dropping, dropping. Mm hmm? Sounds a little bit high and neutral for my liking, to be honest with you. Apparently neutral is supposed to be about 150 RPM higher than in gear. Let's see how much this clunks. Mm, not bad, to be honest with you. 
the purpose of this video was really to show some of the things it can be when an outboard stalls at idle. Ideally, you would get out there and just clean this carburetor. It's a pretty common thing. It could be a whole lot of other stuff. It could be compression, uh, could be reed valves, could be ignition, could be ignition timing, all sorts of stuff. But to be honest with you, more often than not, it's something simple, particularly in an outboard that's not that old. I think the idle's a little bit high. I'd love to know what it is. Time to invest in some sort of optical taco, I think. Uh, I know Adrian's got one, um, but it'd be good to have one on Renko as well. So uh, let's put the cowling on, see if it behaves the same. And I think it's better. Look, I don't feel we really got to the heart of any particular problem. Really what I did, well, we'll talk about it when it's quiet the boat. Well, not stalling like we did when we first got here. Well, thanks for watching. I think we briefly touched on a lot of topics that I'd like to expand on in the future. Uh, even simple things like, you know, how does a choke work? What does it do? Uh, how does the idle circuit work in a carburetor? I mean, you can go into infinite detail about this stuff. I think uh, I would love to have been able to get a number from a taco on what the idle was, but I think the key thing there really was upping the idle speed enough so that it didn't stall, then it allowed me to adjust the mixture screw while the engine was running and hear the effect. Did bringing that screw out increase the RPM or reduce it? And it would ultimately increase it as it got to this stoichiometric mixture and then decrease it as it got too rich again. Oddly, I found, I think, that I added fuel and it got better. Now, that could mean the carburetor needs a clean. Don't get me wrong, that's what I was talking about before. Um, but it is slightly at odds with this idea that the choke makes it worse rather than better. Once we had the mixture dialed in, we could then drop the idle back down to a sensible level. A level where it doesn't stall, but it's not so high that when you put it in gear, you really hear that dog clutch clunk because it's going too fast when you go into gear. You don't need a taco to help you find that kind of sweet spot. Too low, it's stalling. Too high, you'll really hear the sort of violence of putting the outboard into gear. If you're somewhere in that sweet spot, you're pretty much good to go. You don't really need to know what the exact number is. So hopefully this uh, gives you a few tips. Um, obviously I'm gonna add this video to the new website, which is all about outboard diagnosis. I'm gonna keep building videos to make that more comprehensive. Uh, and some of the smaller videos that perhaps expand on details will also go into there. All right, well take care, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. See ya. trouble. Well done, Daisy. Got them both. You're on fire today. You found some insects instead, Daffy. Probably white ants knowing my luck. Eat them all. All right, I'm going to leave you to it. Have fun.